In this video, I'll go through the Year 7 Space and Cartesian Plane Test Preview. If you've got the Test Preview sheet, you can use the time tags in the description below to skip to the question numbers that you need help with. I've also put a brief description down there for people looking for help with particular sorts of questions. Question 1's got us looking at axes of symmetry, and you can sort of think of symmetry as being in like a bit of a reflection. So imagine that we drew a mirror in here somewhere. It has to be the same on both sides, okay? So this would be the axes of symmetry for M, straight through the middle. O would have two. Be cut this way or this way. But there aren't any axes of symmetry for G. If we went and chopped that one in half, it's different on both sides. So this one doesn't have any. Question 2 is a bit different. It's asking us about rotational symmetry. And rotational symmetry is where if you turn something upside down, if you spin it 180 degrees, it'll look the same. So my initials are a really good example of that. My initials are MW. But then if I rotate them, we'll say MW. So if you have a look at these letters, we could turn Z around and it would have rotational symmetry. But if we turned Q upside down, it would not, and nor would E. Question three is about translation. Now, translation is when a shape moves, and the important things to have a look at here are we're going to pick one point. So I'm going to pick the corner here, that's the C. And then I'm going to look at the new C position, which is this C dash. So we use this, a solid C the original point and the dashes mean where the points move to and we're going to describe how this is moved and so you can see here that it's moved one unit right and it is moved one two three four five six units down In question four, instead of us describing the translation, it's asking us to translate the rectangle below. And so we're going to move it two units down and eight units left. The easiest way to do this is just to pick one point. And if we move that point, the rest of the points will move with the shape. So we'll go two down, so one, two, and then it will go eight units left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way out to the edge. And now we can draw the shape. We know that the shape is one, two, three, four units high. So that means that it will be four units high. And it is one, two, three units wide. Now, if this was a more complicated shape, you might have to move each of the four corners. But because this is a nice shape that we can count easily, we'll just cheat a little bit and we'll just take the one point and then draw the shape. This rule is really not cooperating. And the last little point that we need to do is we need to label the corners, okay? Now, that means that A becomes... A dash, B becomes B dash, C becomes C dash, and D becomes D dash. Question five is looking at reflections. So instead of sliding the shape, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over onto this other side. And this would be a bit like looking at it in a mirror. So because D is two spaces from, the, from this line here of reflection, the axes, we will then take D two points out here. So this one will become our new D position. We can see that A is five out. So if we go three, four, five, this becomes our new A position. So A dash. C goes in here. The C dash and B goes in here as B dash. And then we can just take our ruler and join it all together. 
I think they might have to fray here in this because they are shaped not quite to get to Ooh. 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 Cool. And we've successfully reflected our shape. Question six is a different one again. This one looks at rotation, and so this is twisting the shape around. So if you take two points on here that are nice and clear, so let's look at the original C and the new C position, you can see that this shape has been turned through 180 degrees in a clockwise direction. So it has a, a 180 degree clockwise rotation. If you called it an anti-clockwise one, that would be fine too, because we could have actually rotated it this way as well. But so we don't confuse ourselves, we'll just stick to one answer for this one. Question seven is another rotation one. Now, we're being asked to rotate this shape um, 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, <coughs> It's important that it says a round point B. So what you have to imagine doing is sticking a pin in this point, okay? And then we're going to rotate the shape 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. So what will happen is B will stay exactly where it is and become B dash. A will swing down to here and this will become A dash. D will swing up to here and become, so that's, it will spin 90 degrees up to here and that will become D dash. And C will spin up to here and become C dash. Now I've drawn all over that and made a mess of it, we'll just clean it up. Got our new points. And so we'll just draw our new position and our questions completed. Question 8 is another rotation question. It wants us to go 90 degrees anti-clockwise like in the last question but this time around point zero. So you need to again manage, manage, imagine that you're sticking a pin in at this point and that's the bit that you're spinning the shape around. Now if it's going to go 90 degrees anti-clockwise it's going to turn this way and so what we might need to do is come up with a strategy to move this one because it's not quite as easy for me to explain this one. The way that I see this is if I am trying to get from point O to point B I can see that I have to go one, two, three out to the line BC and then turn 90 degrees and go two units. So if I want to plot its new position, it will go up one, two, three, and then it will move across one, two positions. And so this will be my new B position. Okay, so if I need to find the other points, I can do the same thing. So if I'm now targeting point C, I can see that I go one, two, three, and then I turn and one, two. So when I mark the new position, I'll go up one, two, three, one, two, and this will become my new C position. You can count for the others, but I can also see here that um, <clears throat> my rectangle is six spaces long. So at this point here, I can just kind of cheat a little bit. And that will become A. And this one will become D. If you can't see that, you'll have to count each and every one of them, which is fine. It's just a little slower. If it was an unusual shape, not a nice regular rectangle, you would have to do that anyway, because you'd have to reference from that central point here. But now we've successfully drawn our newly rotated rectangle. Question nine is a big question. We have to do a couple of things here. The first thing we have to do is we have to plot some points on the Cartesian plane. And then we need to translate or slide the shape. 
okay? And we'll label its new position. Once we've done that, we need to write down the coordinates of the new positions of point A, B, C, and D. Something else that we need to talk about are coordinates. These up here are coordinates, and they're always described as an X and a Y coordinate. And on the Cartesian plane, which is the graph down here, this always has the X axis going across and the Y axis going up and down. And it's the same for every single graph. And you always call your coordinates X before Y. In other words, you always go across before you go up and down. Okay. And that's the same for every map and every Cartesian plane that you ever read. Always go across before up and down. So that's you always need to crawl before you can run is a good way of thinking about it. So the first point, point A, is at minus 5, 5. I'm getting that from here, okay? So what I do is I go across to minus 5, and then I go up to 5, and I put my dot in here. Okay, and this will become point A. Next, I've got minus 5, 1. So again, I go across the x-axis here to minus 5, and then I go up to 1, and I put a dot in here, and this will become point B. The next one is minus 3, 1, so I go across cross to minus 3, and then I go up to 1, and I put my dot in, and that one will become C, and then I go minus 3, 5 is across to minus 3 again, and this time up to 5, and I put in my point D, and I'll join those together to make a rectangle. Now I'm up to the second part of the question. It says that I need to translate the shape 8 to the right and 1 unit up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose 1 point. And in this case, I think what I'll do is I'll pick C, okay? Because it's nice, it's clear, it's on the edge. I need to go 8 units to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the right, and then it tells me 1 unit up. So, this point here will become my new C position. If it was a complicated shape, I would have to move each and every point over in the same way. And you can do that if you like, but I can see that the line BC is 2 units wide, so I'm just going to copy the B over. And I can see that this shape, so let's say line AB here, is four units up. So one, two, three, four. That will be my new A position. And this one over here will be my new D position. Join them together. Just so that I finish this question, I now need the coordinates for each of these positions. So can see here that to get point A dash, so I can write the coordinates in over here, I need to go across to 3 and then up to 6. So my coordinates would be 3, 6. Then for question B, I go across to 3 and up to 2, so my coordinates will be 3, 2. To get C, I go across to 5 and up to 2, so this one will be 5, 2. And finally, to get coordinate D dash, I go across to 5 and up to 6, so the coordinates for that one will be 5, 6.